Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. For today's tutorial, we're making an off the shoulder sweater. As the weather's turning where I'm at, now's the time to keep it warm, feel cozy, and keep it chic. So that's what we did for this super quick workup using a handful of stitches and motivated by chills brought to you with lots of love. Speaking of, if you're looking to make something you love, or maybe even a gift for someone special, you're in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet tutorials and patterns for all tastes, with even more dropping weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe, and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 550 grams of yarn. That's 1,260 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5 and 6 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. And there is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you're typically punctual or fashionably late. I actually think that I'm right in the middle, so I'm on time, but I'd like to change that so that I arrive early. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Half double crochet. And double crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and I'll explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 5mm hook and we're all starting with our shoulder band. So let's all make a chain the height that we'd like for our shoulder band to be. I'd like for mine to be roughly 2 inches or 5 centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain 10. Now that we have our chain, let's get started on our first row. So block off that last chain and start with a chain 3. That chain 3 does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, and now we're going to put one double crochet into every stitch. So yarn over, preparing for our double crochet. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the fourth chain from our hook, we're going to bring our hook down, insert, yarn over, pull through, when we have these three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the last two. That's our first double crochet. Let's do one more together. Yarn over into that following chain, insert, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and continue with one double crochet into every chain. Now that we've put one double crochet into every chain, we're going to do our following row, which is another double crochet row, but now within the back loops. So all we're going to do is chain three, still doesn't count as a stitch, and flip our work. And now we're going to do a back loop double crochet, so yarn over. Finding that last stitch from our previous row, we're going to insert our hook in through that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. Yarn over, pull through. Then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Again, yarn over into that following stitch, insert into that back loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and continue with one back loop double crochet into every stitch. And that's it. At the end of this row, we're all going to chain three, flip our work, and put one back loop double crochet into every stitch again. And all we're going to do is continue to repeat our previous row, so that's just our back loop double crochet row with no increases and no decreases, until we have a width that can reach from the top of our underarm across our chest to the top of our other underarm. And we must all end on an odd number row that is in multiples of three. And then I will meet you back. So I am back with the first portion of my shoulder band. Now I have a total of 21 rows. My width is roughly 10 and a half inches or 27 centimeters. And what we're going to do before we get started on the following row is insert our stitch markers into the first and into that last row that we made, just so we know that this is going to be the front panel. Next, we're going to continue on with our back loop double crochet rows with no increases and no decreases until we now have a shoulder portion 
that reaches from the top of our underarm within the front, around our shoulder to the top of our underarm within the back. And that too needs to end on an odd number in multiples of three. And then I'll meet you back when we have the shoulder portion completed. All right, so we are back. I've just finished up the shoulder portion of my shoulder band, and now I have a total of 36 rows. So for the shoulder portion, I did a total of 15 rows. This width is roughly seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters, or right now my total width is 18 inches or 46 centimeters. Now from here, we're just going to repeat everything we did here on the other side. But before we get started on the following row, we are going to need to insert some different colored stitch markers into the first shoulder row that we did and into the last shoulder row that we did. And now that's just so that we know where the front panel and the shoulder starts. Now right after this, we're going to do more back loop double crochet rows, and this next section is going to be the back panel. The back panel will have the same amount of rows as the front panel, so for me a total of 21 rows, and I will be inserting my stitch marker into the first and into the last back panel rows as well, just like how we did for these because we still want to section that off. And then once when the back panel is finished, we're going to do the same amount of rows that we had for the shoulder, so for me an additional 15. Once we have the entirety of our shoulder band completed, making sure that our stitch markers are into the right places, I will meet you back so we can seam everything together. Alrighty, so we are back. I have the total length for my shoulder band completed. I have a total of 72 rows. My length is 35 inches or 89 centimeters, and now we're going to seam everything together. So what we're going to do is fold our band in half, making sure that nothing is twisted, and then we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. All right, so now that our hook is into both the corner stitch of the front and the back panel, now we're gonna seam everything together. So what we're going to do is yarn over and pull through, and now we're going to do a single crochet seam. So start by inserting our hook into that first stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, into that first stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and single crochet. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert, next stitch into the back panel, insert and single crochet and that's it we're going to continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into and then i'll meet you back so we can single crochet across our shoulder band so now that our seam is completed we're going to chain one and flip our work wrong side out meaning the seam that we just did is going to be along the inside now now from here all we're going to do is put two single crochets into every side row and we do need to insert our stitch markers into the outside stitches of those side rows as well so let's do this first one together this is my first side row. I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook into there with one single crochet, and if you're like me, you have your tail in here, place that over your hook if you don't want to weave that in later, and single crochet around everything just once, and then into that same side row with a second single crochet. Now this is a stitch marker row. So what I mean by placing your stitch markers into the outside stitches, what we're going to do, since this is the first side row that we have with our stitch marker into it for this section, I'm going to insert my stitch marker into the first stitch into the single crochets that we just made. And then from here, we're going to continue with two single crochets into every side row until we reach our following stitch marker side row. So let's just do one more side row together. This is my next side row. I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook in through there with two single crochets. So there's one, then into that same top loop with my second, and that's it. I'll meet you back once we reach our next stitch marker stitch. All right, so we've done our single crochet row all the way down until we have reached our following stitch marker side row. No, I haven't worked into that yet, so let's do that together. Since this is the second stitch marker that we have for this color, which is the end of my front panel, I'm gonna be inserting my stitch marker into the second single crochet. So into the top of that side row, here is one, and then into that same top loop with my second. Don't forget to insert your stitch marker into the outer stitch to frame off our front panel. Now since we're here, we might as well get started on the following row. That is a stitch marker row as well. So since this is the first stitch marker row that we have for the shoulder, I'm going to be inserting it into the first single crochet. So to do that together, this is my next side row. I'm going to single crochet twice into there because we're still putting two single crochets into every side double. And I am going to insert my stitch marker into that first single crochet because this is the first row for my shoulder. So we're basically just framing off each of our sections with the outermost stitch that we have for our single crochets. We're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way around. When we don't have any more side rows left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space, 
And just as a quick tip, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this portion can stretch. So try this piece on once when we've slip stitched into that chain space to make sure that everything is fitting nicely. If it's a little bit too tight, redo some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, redo some stitches with a tighter grip. Either way, I'll meet you all the way back around. All right, so we are back and our single crochet row is complete. Now just to make sure that everything is still looking pretty good, we should all double check and make sure that we have the same amount of stitches that we have for the front panel as the back, and then the shoulders should have the same amount of stitches as well. Once we have single crocheted all the way around, we have slip stitched into that chain space, did a chain up of one and cut, and now we're gonna get started on the body portion. So now we're gonna grab our six millimeter hook. Then from here, we're all gonna start by making an odd number chain, the length that we'd like for the piece to be. So starting from one inch underneath our underarm, down to where we'd like the bottom of this top to be, keeping in mind that we will have a bottom band as well. So you can make this cropped down to your hips or a little bit longer, that's completely up to you. I'd like for mine to be full length, so I'm gonna stop at my hips. So I need roughly 11 inches or 29 centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 39. So now that we have our chain, we're all gonna get started on our row one, which is a Suzette stitch row. So we're all gonna start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then into the chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert with a single crochet and a double crochet. So into that chain that we blocked off, insert, starting with a single, so pull through, pull through two, and then a double crochet, so yarn over. Into that same stitch with our single crochet, pull through, pull through two, and pull through two. Now that is our first Suzette stitch set. Now from here, we're just gonna continue this to reach the end of the row. Now after we finish up every Suzette stitch set, we are always going to skip that following stitch because that double crochet actually counts as that stitch. If we work into there, we will accidentally be increasing, which is not what we wanna do just yet. So to do the next set, we are going to skip that following stitch, and then into the one right after, a single crochet. So insert with a single, and then into that same stitch with a double crochet. Let's do this once more. After that set, we're gonna skip a stitch, into the next, insert with a single and a double, and that's it. We are all going to continue to do this until we all have two chains left. So we've made our way all the way down and we should all have one, two chains left. Now all we're gonna do to close off this row is just half double crochet into that last chain. So yarn over. Skip one stitch into the next with one half double crochet. And now everyone's row one is complete. Now, everyone's row two is going to be a half double crochet row and it is gonna start with an increase of three. So what we're gonna do is chain two and flip our work. Now, finding that first stitch from our previous row, which should be the top of that half double crochet, insert with three half double crochets. So there's my first, into that same stitch with my second, and then into that same stitch with my third. And from here, continue with one, half double crochet into the rest of our stitches. All right, so everyone's row two is complete. Now for this portion, it's basically gonna be a repeat of our two previous rows, so let's just get the following row started together. Now every odd number row is going to be a Suzette stitch row. So from where we're at, chain one and flip. And just to do this together, find that first stitch from our previous row and insert with a single and also with a double crochet. Let's do this again. Skip one stitch into the next, insert with a single and a double, and I will meet you back right after we have two stitches left. We've made our way down with our row three. We should all have two stitches left. To close off our row three, we're just going to half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. Now our row three is complete. Everyone's row four or our following even number row is going to be a half double crochet row, so chain two and flip. And start this row off with a, an increase of three half doubles. So into that first stitch with one, with two, with three half doubles, then one half double crochet into the rest of our stitches. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up our first four rows together. Like I said, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows until we have an underarm portion that can reach from mid underarm 
over to the front of our body, right underneath where our front panel stitch marker stitch is when we have our shoulder band on. Now, a really quick sizing tip that I have for you guys is that the main portion of the front panel is basically just going to be the same width of the front panel that we blocked off within the shoulder band. So from here to here for me. The best place to get width would be to add more of these underarm rows that we're currently working on. So if you would like an oversized fit, add as many as you would like, or if you would like it a slimmer fit, that's possible as well. Just do fewer rows, making sure that it's fitting nicely to your body. I will meet you guys back right after an odd number row. So along the top so that we can work straight into the main portion of the front panel from there. All right, so we are back and our underarm is complete. I have a total of seven rows. My width is roughly three inches or eight centimeters. And now we're going to connect this to our shoulder band. But first things first, we're all going to want to make an even number chain that can reach up to our stitch marker stitch. So I have already figured out that I actually just need about one inch or two centimeters. So I made a chain of four. Now let's grab our shoulder band. So what we're all gonna do from here, right after we finished up our chain, is insert our hook into our stitch marker stitch that we have for the front panel. I'm going to insert in through there, then yarn over and pull through everything to connect. So right after we've slip stitched into that stitch marker stitch, all we're gonna do is flip our work and then put one half double crochet into every chain, one half double crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way down. So all we're gonna do is just yarn over and then into that first chain, insert your hook with a half double crochet. And continue with one half double crochet into every chain and into every stitch. Now at the end of the row, we're going to chain one, flip our work and then do our Suzette stitch row all the way back up. For this portion of our piece, we aren't gonna be doing any increases or decreases. So we're gonna work our way all the way back up and when we have two stitches left, we're gonna close off the row with a half double crochet into the last stitch. So pretty much the same way that we have been doing all of our Suzette stitch rows so far. And then I'll meet you back at the base so we can connect it together. All right, so we are back. We have made our way all the way up with our second row for the body. Now we're gonna connect this row into the base. Now, just as a really quick tip, these first two rows that we just did, it's just going to be how these two rows are connected. The rest of the rows that we will also do together is going to be how the rest of this piece is going to be connected. So all we're gonna do is first, make sure that we're working towards our other front panel stitch marker stitch, and then insert your hook into that next available stitch that we have. And that slip stitch does not actually count as a stitch. That's just a connect. Then from here, we're gonna work our way up to the following row, which is another half double crochet row. So just slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base. That slip stitch still doesn't count as a stitch and flip our work. And now from here, put one half double crochet into every stitch. So yarn over. We're going to find the last stitch from our previous row, which should be the half double crochet, making sure we're not working into any of those slip stitches into the base and put one half double crochet into every stitch to reach the end of the row. When we reach the end of the row, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and then do our Suzette stitch rows, making our way all the way back up. And then I'll meet you back at the base so we can connect it together once more. All right, so we are back. We have finished up our half double crochet row and then made our way back up with our Suzette stitch row. And now we're gonna connect it into the base. So whenever we're connecting our Suzette stitch row into the base, we're gonna slip stitch into that second stitch into the base. So we're all gonna count up one, count up two. Now into that second stitch into the base, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So insert, pull through everything. That slip stitch still does not count as a stitch. We just need it to connect. And that is going to be how we're always gonna connect our Suzette stitch row until we reach our stitch marker stitch on the other side. And since we're here, we might as well work our way up to the following row, which is a half double crochet row. So all we're going to do to do that is just slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. Also doesn't count as a stitch and flip our work. Then from here, one half double crochet into every stitch. All we're going to do is continue to repeat our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases, making sure that we're connecting it into the base the same way that we just did together until we are worked into our other front panel stitch marker stitch. We should all end along the bottom so that we can work straight into the underarm portion from there together. Alrighty, so we are back and the width of my front panel is complete. Now I have a total width of 14 inches or 36 centimeters and now we're going to finish it off with our underarm portion. So first things first, we're all gonna make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, right side up. 
Then we're going to insert our stitch marker into the same amount of chains that we made that led up to our shoulder band. Now since I made a chain 4 along this side, I counted down 4 stitches and inserted my stitch marker. Now from here we're going to do the following row in our row sequence which is a Suzette stitch row. So since we should all end along the bottom, we're going to chain 1, flip our work and then do our Suzette stitch row all the way up, leaving the last 2 stitches right before our stitch marker. So I made my way all the way down, leaving the last two stitches. Now what we're going to do from here is pretty much the same way that we did the Suzette stitch rows for the other underarm portion. We're just going to half double crochet into that last stitch. So we're all going to yarn over. Skip that following stitch and then into the next, insert with a half double crochet, and now this row is complete. Now our following row is going to be a half double crochet row, so we're all going to chain two and flip our work. Then we're going to start this half double crochet row off with a decrease of three half double crochets. So yarn over, into that first stitch, pull through, into that next stitch, pull through, then into that next stitch, pull through for a total of one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, then one half double crochet into the rest of our stitches. And that's it. From here, we're going to continue to repeat these two rows until we have the same amount of underarm rows that we started this piece off with. Once we have the same amount of rows, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. Alright, so we are back. The entirety of my front panel is complete. I have a total of 17 inches or 43 centimeters. I did do a chain up of one and cut right after my last row. And now what we're going to do from here is everything that we just did here on the other side for the back panel. And once we have both sides all finished up, I'll meet you guys back so we can seam everything and get started on our sleeve. So once we have both of our panels completed, the next thing we're going to do is seam our sides. So first things first, we're all going to make sure that our work is swept wrong side out, meaning the seam that we have for the shoulder band is now along the outside because we want both of these seams to be on the inside once we flip it right side out. Then we're going to insert our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Now we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to do a single crochet seam. So start by inserting your hook into that next available stitch into the front panel, and then into that next available stitch into the back panel, and then we're going to single crochet around everything. Let's do this again. Into the next stitch into the front panel, into the next stitch into the back panel, and single crochet, and that's it. We are going to continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, repeat this on the other side, and then I'll meet you back. All right, so now that everything is all seamed up, the next thing we're going to do is our prep row for our sleeve, and then we can get started on the actual length. So what we're all gonna do is insert our hook into that first available stitch that we have, into the stitch that's nearest to our shoulder band. Then from here, we're going to put one single crochet into every stitch, then alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row until we reach our side seam. So we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, start with a chain up of one just to secure, then one single crochet into every stitch. Now that we put one single crochet into every stitch, we should have reached our first side row, so now we're just going to alternate between one to two single crochets, making our way all the way down. So finding our following side row, which is this one for me, I'm going to find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. Into our following side row, which this is mine right here, I'm going to find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. So there is one, and then into that same top loop with a second single crochet. And again, this is my following side row, find that top loop, insert with one, into my following side row, find that top loop and insert with two single crochets. Continue doing this until we reach our side seam. All right, so I am back. My single crochet row until I reached my side seam right here is complete. Now for this portion, it may be a little bit different for everyone. Once when we have reached our side seam, we all wanna make sure that the amount of single crochets that we have ends in multiples of three. So if you guys need to, go ahead and add an extra single crochet into that last side row, or even two if you need to add two more to make sure that we all end on multiples of three, just into that last side row right before our side seam. 
Now for those of you that are just lucky enough to end in multiples of three, you guys are completely fine. I actually just need to add one more single crochet to get my multiple of three. So into that last side row, I'm gonna insert into there. And now this portion of our single crochet is complete. Now we do wanna make sure that we know where the middle is. So I'm gonna insert my stitch marker into this last single crochet that I made. Then from here, I'm going to make my way back up again, alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row and then one single crochet into every stitch until we reach our shoulder seam. But the amount of stitches that we have on both sides need to be the same. So if we added an additional stitch or two on this side, we're gonna have to add an additional stitch or two on this side as well. And also into that following stitch that we're going to do into the first side row on the other side of the seam, we're gonna insert our stitch marker into there because we are all going to have two middle rows. So into that following stitch, I'm gonna insert into there with one single crochet. And since that's the first single crochet on the other side of my side seam, I'm gonna insert my stitch marker into there. Now, since I needed to add one extra stitch on this side, I'm gonna add an additional stitch on this side as well. And then from here, just make your way all the way up. And when we don't have any more stitches left to work into, do a chain up of one and cut. And then I'll meet you back. Alrighty, we are back. Our single crochet prep row for our armhole is complete. And now from here, we're gonna get started on the length of our sleeve. So making sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up, we're all going to insert our same six millimeter hook into one of our stitch marker stitches. Then from here, we're all going to make an odd number chain, the length that we like for the sleeve to be, keeping in mind that we will have a long cuff as well. Now I'd like for my sleeve to be about 11 inches or 29 centimeters, so I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook and make a chain of 39. Now that we have our chain, we're going to get started on our first row, which is going to be a Suzette stitch row. Now this is gonna be done pretty much the same way that we did the underarm portion. So just to get this first row started, we're all gonna block off that last chain and do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that is our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, insert with our first Suzette stitch. So bring your hook down into that chain with a single crochet and then into that same chain with a double crochet. Then from here, skip a chain into the next, insert with another Suzette stitch set, so a single and a double. We're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way down until we all have just two chains left. So we've made our way all the way down with our row one and we should have left our last two chains. Now we're gonna close off this row with a half double crochet into that last chain. So yarn over, Skip that second to last chain and then into the last insert with just one half double crochet and now this row is complete. Now to finish off the row, we're going to slip stitch into the same stitch that our chain's coming out of and we're just doing that to make sure that we don't miss out on this stitch, but this is just gonna be for this row. So into that same stitch that our chain is in or into our stitch marker stitch, we're going to insert yarn over and pull through everything with a slip stitch and remember that that slip stitch doesn't actually count as a stitch that's just to connect. Then we need to work our way up to the following row. So into that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there, flip our work, remembering that none of those slip stitches into the base count as a stitch and our following row is going to be a half double crochet row. So starting this row off, we're gonna start with an increase of three half doubles. So yarn over into the top of the last stitch from our previous row, which should be the top of our half double crochet. We're gonna insert with three half doubles, there's one. Into the same stitch with a second, into the same stitch with a third. Then from here, continue with one half double crochet into the rest of our stitches. Then at the end of our row, we're going to do another Suzette stitch row. So chain one, flip our work, and then do our Suzette stitch set all the way back down, remembering that we aren't gonna do any increases or decreases. So when we have two stitches left, just put one half double crochet into the last, and then I'll meet you back to show you how we're going to connect it. We are back. We should all have one, two, three rows nearly complete. From here, we're going to connect it into the base. And the way that we're going to connect this row into the base is going to be the way that we're connecting it into the base until we reach our last single crochet right before our shoulder band. So what we're going to do is find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch it into there, and now this row is complete. Then to work our way up to the following row, just slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base, flip our work, and then we're going to do our half double crochet row. And that's always gonna start with an increase of three half doubles, 
one half double crochet into the rest of our stitches. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows until we are worked into our last single crochet that we have, that's right before our shoulder band. Once we have this portion complete, I will meet you guys back and then we can work into the shoulder band together. All right, so we are back. The increase half of my sleeve is complete. Now from here, we're basically going to repeat exactly what we did when we were connecting our front and back panel to the shoulder strap when it comes to connecting it into the shoulder band for our sleeve. So this following row may be a little bit different for everyone. I have ended along the base, as you guys can see, so I'm just going to do the following two rows with you guys. But for those of you that ended along the outer edge, chain one, flip your work, and then do your Suzette stitch row all the way down. Now we still aren't doing any increases or decreases, so just make sure that you end off this Suzette stitch row with one half double crochet into that last stitch. And then I will meet you guys back. So for those of us that have ended along the base, what we're going to do is slip stitch into that next available stitch that we have, that's into our shoulder band, which should be our stitch marker stitch. So into that next available stitch, I'm just going to insert my hook in through there with a slip stitch. Now I'm gonna flip my work and put one half double crochet into every stitch. Now for this portion of the sleeve, we aren't gonna be doing any increases or decreases. So when we flip our work, we're just gonna put one half double crochet into every stitch. When we reach the end of the row, chain one, flip your work, and do your Suzette stitch row all the way back down. We aren't gonna do any increases or decreases into that row either, so just make sure that your Suzette stitch row ends on a half double crochet into that last stitch. Then I will meet everyone back so that we can connect it into the base together. Alrighty, so we are back. We have made our way all the way down with our Suzette stitch row, and now we're gonna connect it into the base together. So like I said, working into the shoulder band portion, it's actually gonna be done pretty much the exact same way that we're connecting it into the base, for the front and back panel. And we're doing it this way when it comes to working into the shoulder band so that our sleeve doesn't become too wide. So I'm just going to remind you guys what it's gonna be like. So all we're gonna do is whenever we're working into the base, we're going to count up the next two available stitches. So here's one, here's two. Into that second stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch to close off this row. Then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base. None of those slip stitches into the base count as a stitch and flip our work. And like I said, when we're working into the shoulder band, we aren't gonna be doing any increases or decreases. So our following row is a half double crochet row. Just put one half double crochet into every stitch and that's it. From here, we're just gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows until we are worked into our last stitch that is within the shoulder band. So this one right over here. And then I'll meet you back so we can work down our underarm together. All right, so we are back. We have just worked away all the way across the top portion of our sleeve. So those are all the rows that didn't have any increases or decreases along the bottom of our shoulder band. Now from here, we're gonna continue on with our sleeve, working our way down our underarm. Now this portion of our sleeve is going to be done pretty similarly to how we did the increase side, but instead of increases, we're gonna be doing decreases. And we are also going to switch back the way that we're gonna connect it into the base. So the following row may be a little bit different for everyone. If you guys are along the base like me, you're gonna slip stitch into that next available stitch into the base, and then we can work right into our half double crochet row from there. But for those of you that have ended along the outer edge, what you guys are going to do is your Suzette stitch row all the way back. Remember, we're not doing any increases or decreases, so that row is the same for pretty much the entire piece so far. Slip stitch it into that next available stitch into the base. We are back and we have all just finished up our Suzette stitch row. Now all we're going to do from here is just slip stitch it into that next available stitch into the base. We aren't gonna be skipping any more stitches because we just wanted to do that portion for the shoulder band. So this is my next available stitch into the base. I'm gonna slip stitch into there, flip our work, and now we're gonna get started on our half double crochet row and that is gonna start with a decrease of three. And what we're all going to do is yarn over into the top of that first stitch, making sure we're still not working into any of those slip stitches into the base, we're going to insert, pull through, next stitch, pull through, stitch right after that, pull through for one, two, three, four, five loops on our hook. Then yarn over and pull through all five. And that's it. From here, continue with one half double crochet into every stitch. Then all we're going to do at the end of the row is chain one, flip our work, do our Suzette stitch row all the way back down towards the base. 
Then it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows. And then I'll meet you back along the base just to remind you how we're going to be connecting it once more. Alrighty, so we are back. We have finished up our half double crochet row and our Suzette stitch row. Now we're back at the base. We're just going to connect it together. Now remembering that the decrease portion of our sleeve is going to be connected the same way that we did for the increase portion. All we're going to do is find that next available stitch into the base, insert with a slip stitch, then find that following stitch into the base to work our way up to the next row, slip stitch into there, flip our work, and then do our half double crochet row, starting it off with a decrease of three. From here, continue to repeat our two previous rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and then I'll meet you back to seam everything together. All right, so we are back. The decrease side of our sleeve is complete. Now we're going to seam everything together, so let's make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out so that all of our seams can be along the same side, and then we're going to insert our hook in through the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Next, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything, and just do a single crochet seam. So since we already know how to do that, let's just do the first one. Find that first stitch into the front panel, first stitch into the back panel, single crochet, and that's it. Continue on with this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. Alright, so we are back. Our sleeve is all seamed up and now we're ready to get started on our cuff. So first things first, we're going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out now, meaning all of our seams are along the inside. Then we're going to insert our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the edge of our sleeve. Then we're going to do a single crochet row, skipping over every other row to help us cinch with our cuff. So let's all insert our yarn onto our hook. We are going to pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, all we're going to do is just find that next available stitch. This is mine for me. It's a side Suzette stitch row, but if yours is a side half double, that's completely fine as well. Just find that top loop, insert your hook with just one single crochet. Now I'm going to skip my following side row, which is a side half double, but if your following side row is a side Suzette stitch row, fine as well. Skip that one for you guys. And then into the top of that following row, insert with just one single crochet. That's basically it. We're going to continue to skip our following row and single crochet into the next, making our way all the way around. And just as a really quick tip, when the single crochet row is complete, we should have half the amount of stitches as rows that we have for our sleeve. And then slip stitch into that chain space, then I'll meet you back. So we have just made our way all the way around with our single crochet row, and now we're ready to get started on the length of our cuff. Now from here, we're all going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our cuff to be. I would like for mine to be longer, so I'm going to start by making a chain 30, and that's roughly 7 inches or 18 centimeters. Now once we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain 1. Now we're going to do a slip stitch row. So finding that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert, yarn over, and gently pull through everything on our hook. Again, into that next chain, we're going to insert, yarn over, and gently pull through everything, and just once more, next chain, insert, gently pull through everything. Continue with one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're now going to connect it into the base. Now connecting this into the base is going to be fairly simple. Just find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there to connect. Now that slip stitch into the base does not count as a stitch. Now to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. Also doesn't count as a stitch. Flip our work, and now we're going to do back loop slip stitches. So finding that next available stitch, we're going to insert into that back loop only, and also making sure we're not inserting our hook into any of those slip stitches into the base. So into that back loop, then we're going to yarn over and gently pull through everything again, into that next stitch's back loop, yarn over and pull through everything, and continue this to reach the end of the row. When we do, we're all going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and I'll meet you back at the base just once more. And also we do want to make sure that we're not tugging too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row will be too tight to work into. We are back in our first one, two, three rows are complete. Now we're just going to connect it into the base. And connecting it into the base is going to be done exactly the same way that we just did. So again, find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there. That slip stitch does not count as a stitch. Then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. Still doesn't count as a stitch. Flip our work and then one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. From here, we're just going to continue to repeat our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases, making our way all the way around. 
And when we don't have any more stitches left to work into, I'll meet you back so we can seam it all together. All right, so we are back. We have made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows, and now we don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're gonna seam it together. Now this seam is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam to make it look like another back loop slip stitch row. So for this seam, we are not going to be flipping our work wrong side out. This seam is going to be along the outside. And all we're gonna do is insert our hook into that first available stitch into the front panel, and insert only in through that front loop. Then find that next stitch into the back panel, insert only in through that back loop. Then when we have these three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert only in through that front loop. Into the next stitch into the back panel, insert only in through that back loop. Then yarn over and pull through all three. And that's it. We're gonna continue doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we did here on the other side. All right, so we are back. Now that both of our seams and cuffs are completed, we are now ready to do the bottom band. So all that's going to start off with is making sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning all of the seams are along the inside. Then from here, we're gonna insert our same six millimeter hook into any one of our side rows, and then we're going to do a single crochet row. So all we're going to do is insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and we're just gonna be putting one single crochet into every side row. So start by finding our first side row, and this is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook in through that top loop, and insert with one single crochet, and then into our following side row, which this is mine right here, insert into that top loop, and single crochet again. We're gonna continue doing this, making our way all the way around, and then slip stitch into that chain space, and then I'll meet you back. Alrighty, so we are back. Our single crochet row along the bottom of our piece is complete. And now all we're going to do is the same back loop slip stitch rows that we did for the cuff. So I'm actually just going to talk you guys through it. Right after we've slip stitched into that chain space, what we're all going to do from here is make a chain the length that we like for the bottom band to be. I'd like for mine to be just about two inches or five centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain 12. Then we're going to do a slip stitch row all the way down our chain, connecting it into the base the same exact way that we did for the cuff flip our work, and then a back loop slip stitch row. We're gonna continue on with our back loop slip stitch rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases, making our way all the way around, and then I'll meet you back to seam everything together. Alrighty, so we are back. We made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam, which is the same exact seam that we did for the cuffs. So just to talk you guys through it, we're gonna make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, meaning all of our side seams are along the inside, then we're gonna insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then do our outside loop slip stitch seam. Once we don't have any more stitches left, do a chain up of one and cut. And now that our bottom band is seamed up, we are all done. Last thing we're gonna have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye.